My name is Dave Moss. I spend approximately 200 days a year at racetracks all over the country, helping professional and amateur road racers and track day riders with suspension tuning on their motorcycles. This is Two Clicks Out. That's a problem. Damn. Yeah, everybody's ripping them apart like this. I figured it's just the asphalt. I mean, it's sunny and warm, but... A tire shouldn't evaporate like this. And even shift, it would break loose and wiggle shifting in the back straight. Just destroy that tire. How, how much time was on it? Uh, I did 20 laps at Laguna. That's it. I did qualifying at the charity race. And, and then practice laps. here? Practice here, in a solo 20. Okay, what spring, do you know what the rate is in the rear? Uh, 90. It's a 90. Okay. I mean, the first 10 laps, I was pounding on it. I know. I mean, it worked well. Yeah. Better so than before? For the sprints, yeah, I think I'm okay. But I, I think I got four rounds to do this tomorrow. Right. I think I'm going to tear it up. Right. So we got through the 10th lap. Everything was consistent. Everything was good. And then this just... That's about when it started going away. Okay, so... It started a little bit, and then it just progressively got worse. Okay. Even on the last lap of the 20, I uh, lost the rear on the right and the back straight away. And I was off the gas. It just came out. Okay, that's... Uh, that's also suspension related. Maybe the rebound's just, just not quite right. And so... Is there a divot there that would unload the suspension or yes. a G out? And after but that, I, I it think slid? It floated either right before it, or maybe there's a rise before the divot, but maybe that upset it. Right, and gave it enough it when it got G loaded. It had to get on the tank and uh, straighten okay. itself out right away, and it didn't wiggle after that. Overall, was the bike more planted in the corners? Oh, Much perfect. more stable? I don't know. I think I can improve the front. Okay. I purposely over broke in one to make sure it's okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I could go past my turning point and everything was super stable. Neutral throttle, no problems? Yeah, no. Okay, so we're good there. And even after the, the heartbreaking at the end of the back straight, uh, mm -hmm. the, the pump is gone. Okay. So, so we're happy with the front. We got rid of all the problems, now we just have a, an enormous tire wear issue. What pressure did you start with? Uh, I took the tire over and compared it against your reading, and it was exactly the same. Okay. So I went out at 22.5, hot off the warmers. Which is, yeah, where it, really what it should be. What compound is it? Medium, 7704. Hmm. That's part of the problem. I should run a hard. I, I like the 6680 for a lot of conditions. Yeah, that's too soft. Okay. You basically overheated the tire and it melted. And the, the reason that, when there's a spring problem, the, this here will actually, the the, so the looks like a salmon filet. Right. When you overheat a tire, everything melts into the middle because of the centrifugal force, obviously. It's gonna spin it into the middle. Okay. Um, but what I really don't like is on this edge of the tire, it's a V. And that's usually indicative of a spring problem. Either not enough installed preload on it or too much. That is awesome. Or it's just the wrong spring okay. for this track. And we will bring three to four rates of springs for every track. Because everybody rides differently each day. You're, never, you're not a robot. Right. So some springs work better some days than others. Um, I have a serious concern there because it's, it, it literally is a V and that's indicative of a spring problem. And it's doing it on this side as well. I don't have it here. So you can see it clear as day here. Right. And that's usually always indicative of some kind of spring problem because we know the gauge is right, the pressure's right, the chain's got enough slack, it's not being bound or forced to spin, so the only thing left is the shock. It's the only thing, so. Now it's hot, let's remeasure it. 
All right, jump on, 60. So that would tell us right now, you can stay on it, um, that now all of a sudden it increased. Go ahead, sit back. You gain seven millimeters of sag. Wait, now it's hot. in the back? Or just from No, the just top. sitting on it. Really? Now that it's hot. So what that would suggest is there's a lot of weight going onto the back of the bike and the tires having to cope with that. So I think if we incre increase spring preload, okay. that will help a great deal with the stress the tire is under by the shock actually taking some of that stress away. Okay. So the tire itself is heavily stressed, which may be indicative of a spring problem, which in this case is preload. Okay. So um, you can stay on the bike. I'm gonna wind, wind it in a bit and set it to where I want it. Okay. Go ahead, bounce the back of the bike a couple of times. Okay, now get back into the tuck. Okay, so now we're at 15 mil. Ride a sag, so that's a total of 30. We could go a hair tighter. Um, so put a tire on tomorrow, for tomorrow, even if it's a takeoff, it doesn't matter. I'd prefer a takeoff, um, just so that we can figure this out. Do you have one? I think so. If, well, I can find one. Find one, yeah, throw one on. Um, Let's get it stinking hot and have you come to the wall. Okay. And then let's check what's going on with the back of the bike because the front's floor, it's flawless. Tire wear is beautiful. Should I change compound? Yeah, you, you it, cannot run a soft tire like that. Okay. It just, you just can't. I was worried about the, the cold weather. Well, the cold weather's not when you're racing. Wow, that's true. So, okay. just like anything else, in the morning set it at maybe, set it at 23 as you would on the warmers. Um, leave the front end alone and go at it, you know, the first couple of laps, every straight, hard on the gas, hard on the brakes, and then tentatively, s smoothly through the corners, right. get the bike stood up and accelerate and do that for a couple of laps, and then get into your routine. Okay. All this morning, everybody was flash burning the top of the tire. The wheel will steal heat from the tire until it gets hot, and okay. then it'll leave the tire alone, and then the, what they do what they call come in, the tire comes in. And so if you give it, especially in cold weather, you've got to give it three laps okay. to just it's get saturated. it in the morning to everything to heat sink okay. and then pick the pace up. So by lap five, if you come in, we'll be able to see how the tire is wearing. Okay. If it's a takeoff, it's better because I'd rather have to work on a takeoff right. and the tire damage will show itself way quicker on a takeoff than a new tire. A new tire won't show it until about 20, 25 laps and then you roached a new tire for no reason when we could just chew up a free takeoff and get rid of the problem at that point, throw the other tire on and we're good to go. Okay. So the shock just freed itself up. There's too much weight on the back of the bike when you're on the gas. The tire was your suspension in essence because the shock's sitting down at the, towards the base of the travel and that's where the problem started. All right, but at least the front's done, so we're good. Okay. All right. Find a tire and... Uh, find, find a takeoff from Jim and or some of these guys, they've got bunches of them and just throw one on. Okay. Even if it's you know gonna get us through 10 laps, that's all we need. Okay. All right? All right. You're out of here.